with gatekeepers with your message if gatekeeping is real wouldn't they keep you out of out of the industry at all you've got four or five different deals how do you remain in the industry of gatekeeping is real Charleston White uh what what's your feelings about Charleston yeah uh he just super polarizing and to tap back in to who he was when he was just a local um, community activist in Fort Worth, Texas, because his heart and his intentions then, that'll really help him with the stature and celebrity that he has now, because now it's almost seeming like we can't take your message as serious because so many antics that this around him. Are you jealous of Charleston White? Do you truly not care about going platinum? Or are you saying that just to just cope with the reality that I may not go platinum with this message. God, I don't deserve no muscles. <laughs> Even though I'm in here every day, God, I don't deserve no muscles. I'm in here working. Yeah, yeah. It's okay, like, it's okay. like, yo, man, like, I want, I want, let me see a little something yeah, for. Yeah. The D1 came up and he was critical of you a little bit. But another guy who represents the kind of same thing, same kind of message, but he's a little critical of you and saying, hey, I'm in gospel doing it. Why are you even over there in the rap thing? Like, we should be over here doing it. We should build our, for uh, our forest over here and bring people here. Get out of there and he's critical of you. How would you take someone like that? Do you think you'll be receptive of him? Yeah, salute Loom. Yeah, salute exactly. Loom. My man Loom. Yeah, that's my man too. Both Looms. Old Loom, new Loom. Both <laughs> loom. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, All ops must know it's up there and it's stuck there, nigga. When it's up there, man, it's stuck there. Shut up. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the fantasy sports platform that's changing the game for people like us. With Prize Picks, you can test your knowledge with picking over and under for your favorite player stats across a wide variety of sports. Think football, baseball, basketball, and beyond. So why wait? Jump into Prize Picks right now and bring more excitement to game day. Whether you're cheering from the stands or the couch, Prize Picks adds that extra layer of fun for sports excitement. Again, my slogan, why would you put something on the game when you could put something on the name? Let's get into those picks and start winning with prize picks today. IUTP code. Let's get back to the show. If I want to, I can have that chip on my shoulder from way back then, bro. But I've never even told that person what a few of their homeboys wow. did to me all them years ago, knowing that they was just trying to earn a stripe with their partner. And I didn't see this person. I have dapped this person, hugged this person, shared laughs with this person, and never even told them. And the reason why, not because I'm afraid to, but it always be people around us when we around each other. But I can't wait till I can have one of these with them, and the cameras don't even need to right, be on. Right. But just to tell them, just to be like, man, I don't even want no stripes. I don't want no apology, no nothing, bro. I just want you to know the power that you have. Number one, to where you had dudes just ready to earn a stripe for you, ready to take my life. But number two, I want you to know the power of the God that we both serve. Because I know you believe in him. Right. I didn't heard you too many times. I know you believe in him. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, bro, that's why I'm doing this stuff. Yeah, bro. man. And that's important, me? bro. That's important, man. I'm telling you, you got you got an important place. What I want to see happen is that I, I want people to be a little more receptive, but I need you to understand how things can be received as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. But they, I, I want the rappers to be receptive, but I think I can understand what it's like. You know, it's, it's a dance that has to happen. You're in a very complex situation. Like you say, speaking on something, but being this close to it, it's like you're in a, you gotta be intelligent to straddle that line like that. I'm gonna say this too. I'm just gonna put, I'm putting a lot of stuff out there cause whatever is yeah. coming from a pure place. Right. I've also seen this, Loon. So, like, you know, by the grace of God, uh, me and Jim got connected. Shout out to my brother Shabazz. You heard Shout me? out to Shabazz. Yeah. Shabazz called me with uh, somebody on the line one time. All right. Yeah. So, Shabazz, um, you know, really, really been amazing in terms of that. And my brother Antonio, um, in, t in terms of uh, Antonio from uh, Memphis, matter of fact. Okay. And, um, and really been that link between to where, like, there's a direct line between me and Jim at this point. And that's been positive. Have we talked yet? Have we met up yet? No. Have we texted each other? Yes. Has it been positive and filled with love? Yes, on both ends. Very encouraging, right? 
But see, when it come to like other people, um, like I haven't had no interactions with directly with, with none of the other people, but there's multiple people in this hip hop and media space who have told me like, well, man, yeah, D, I'm just trying to, you know, understand what your mindset or your heart was, cause I know Ross, and I'm cool with Meek, me and Meek friends, yeah. and da da da, and I know Jill Budden, but ain't nobody trying to build that bridge right. to where it's like, brother, it don't have to be on camera, it don't have to because be- Because it can like, ruin their relationship though. Oh. I'm bringing a nigga to you that took a shot at you publicly to say what? Y'all don't okay. have no business, and, and that's what- You said to say what, but once people know my heart, it should be right like, but they don't know that's the problem they don't know your all they the first time they were introduced to you as it pertains to them not saw you or not know who you are know your face but the first time they were introduced to your message was by way of a shot at them and now here's somebody come that has a direct line to them bringing the guy that had a shot to at them these dudes are not men like that in this industry these dudes in this industry want to preserve relationships so they're scared to Man, like, nah, don't bring D1 on. He ain't gonna let me come back around when I show up with D1. Mm. Cause it, you have that happen in this industry where it's like, oh, he brought, oh man, he be bringing a little such as that. that. That happens, but I disagree with you in that I think all of those brothers could see through the fog to see that, nah, man. Let daddy coming from a passionate place. He, he for real about this message. Now, maybe I disagree with him having to include me in it. Maybe I disagree with how he presented it on that particular platform. But, man. I don't it, think nobody thinks your message is not pure. Right. So, with that being said, if you bring that type of person around just because that person is simply saying, hey, brother, I want you to hear it directly from the source that there was no ill intentions by that. And I just want you to know that we don't ever have to talk again, ever have to work with each other or anything. But... It's just a th it's a man thing for me to where I'm like yeah man like that's but that's you can say that to a camera yo Ross Meek there was no intel in ill intent that's that on that you know Ooh, what I'm saying that camera? ain't anyone any that's your camera right there all right in case it hasn't been clarified Meek Mill Rick Ross I didn't mean anything detrimental to your life to your progress financially professionally by me making comments on Sway's show saying that I love y'all too much to see y'all just not be able to be who God has called us all to be to the fullest extent, you know what I mean? Because I understand that this industry enjoys holding us down and making sure that we can't grow and evolve because we don't feel comfortable doing it. If anything I said got misconstrued, if it came across like I think I'm perfect, man, I'm far from it. I'm not holier than thou, none of that stuff, man. This is one black man to another, one child of God to another child of God, saying I truly do love and appreciate y'all. And, um, and I'm not too big to say that, that if anything was misconstrued, I apologize. They, this game need people like you, cause there's not a lot of men that would do that. You know what I'm saying? They'll feel too much ego, too much pride. But I believe that that's more well received. When I say something, if I don't get nothing for it, I just poured out my whole emotions and understanding 30 years of being in the street and making money. Like I try to help people navigate through something and just pour it out there. And that's what's been leading those people right back to my front door. Without even, I, I never even had to had, had say, tag them or say anything. It's just like, I'll speak on a scenario, man, that deal looked funny. And what he should have done is paid attention, man. I think if he's da 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 da, and those people send the, tend to come back you understand it ain't a lot of it ain't a lot of us bro in this industry that's why i was just saying there's men that won't bring you around for the sake of them being kicked out the car because someone got upset not that you're not welcome and not that you're not pure but it's just hold on man the introduction has to be from a certain person a certain way because it was a public thing you meant nothing bad but it's not about what you present it's about how it's received Right. Same with your children. Sometimes you like, oh shit, you get paranoid to thinking, if I don't fix that, that's gonna cost him his life. And you go super hard and he's receiving that wrong. You tearing him down. Like I've seen fathers at uh, the football field and they've been overly aggressive on their kids as to being productive on the field. And it's like some kids that works, some kids that doesn't. Right. So you gotta cater the approach. And you know, these guys are sensitive in this industry, man. Mm -hmm. They make a lot of money 
off imagery. Mm. It's literally all imagery. Like, that's why we talked about talent ain't enough. It ain't so enough. when you attack my imagery, right. that's when I got a problem. Because if they start only looking at talent, man, I might not, you know what I mean? My image got to stay intact for this shit to even do what it's supposed to do, unfortunately. And I mean, the, the reason why I named Meek and Ross is because that was kind of like a, uh, you know, like a tandem at the time, like putting the album out right. together and all that stuff. When it come to uh, even Joe, bro, like, like same thing. Like, man, right. like Joe Budden, if you watching this, my brother, man, I've listened to so much of your music, brother, and really like put my other friends onto your music over the course of my life that uh, it's, it's interesting to me that uh, this has been our introduction to one another. I don't need anything from you, man. I, I really don't even need a response to this. But if this happens to make its way to you, just know that I haven't had any ill intentions with anything I've done in this industry, whether or not you agree with my method or my message, bro. Uh, I'm simply being a man of God, yes, a proud Christian, but the same dude who I've been for 15 years as I have amassed a super large following independently out here and just been Yo, I'm trying to serve my creator. I'm in an industry that doesn't glorify a lot of what the word that I read, the word of God glorifies. If, you, if you've taken that as something that, that you don't really rock with, um, it's all good. But if any of my comments in terms of my rebuttals to, to what you've said have come across uh, just wrong in your opinion, man, I apologize, bro, because I look forward to being able to see you, dap you off, hug that's you, big, if man. that ever happens, bro. And if, if that doesn't happen, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, too, that's big. You, you know, Joe, I don't want to see you. I don't want to dap you. <laughs> I don't want to do nothing. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to do nothing. But let me ask you about Charleston White. But before we get to Charleston White, I do want to reiterate about that P thing. I wasn't saying that, you know, what, what I was saying was that P, that basically the game has changed. And so the level of investment, back then you, the imagery was, it was, it was way more controllable. Now you gotta worry about the social media aspect. You gotta worry about your artists being seen a lot. You gotta worry about different cogs in this <laughs> thing that wasn't around with P, right? And so I was saying that, and I, and I hope that whoever watches this, that it doesn't come off as I downgraded P because if you listen to me, all of y'all know that I big P up, right? What I do want to be clear about though, because there's people following it and behind me, is that you got to make sure you build something that can withstand the rain and, and the storm mm. um, because they will come. There will be something with taxes. There will be something in every mogul's scenario that's going to be a testimonial or it's gonna you know mm. tear the business down so mm, okay okay you know, I, I just wanted to speak on that now with charleston white uh yeah. what, what's your feelings about charleston yeah uh he just super polarizing super polarizing he's uh he he says stuff that i totally agree with and says stuff that i totally disagree with a lot of the stuff about the content of rap music and the mentality of uh, a lot of the rappers and a lot of the cultural cultural figures, I, I've agreed with what he said. And then a lot of the stuff he said uh, to where it's addressing people and like wishing the worst on them pretty much, you know, like that part um, I disagree with. And a lot of the stuff he says uh, spiritually too, uh, I, I tend to disagree with. But, but do you think that he's tailoring the message in the way that you would be because it's a different tailor right but well charleston white has told y'all that he is being somebody that he's really not because this is what y'all have shown him that y'all want and this is effective when i spoke to him for the four hours like charleston's my guy we we started long time ago when he was kicking out like really i'm one of the people that started the rapper talk i just got cool with a lot of rappers and understood, oh shit, this is is more complex than that. Cause I used to be one of the ones like, yo, y'all dudes ain't really even living like that. How y'all? I literally, me and Charleston White would run side by side. That's how I got the four hour interview long time ago when he first was kicking up. We would run side by side with that kind of rhetoric, you know. Um, he would go live and I would do podcasts, so it'll be a different 
field, but it'll be kind of the same message. But um, both of you guys, uh, I would say, cater your message to be effective in this arena. Um, do you think that's what he's doing, or do you think that do you think that he's right in in what he's saying to try to conform the message and make it effective, or under no circumstances do you do it in that way and edit it that way? Right. I think that you need a Charleston White in the culture. Right. Somebody who, whether or not he even believes what he's saying, he gonna say the things that he knows other people are thinking. That's deep. Yeah. Whether or not he even believes what he's saying, he's gonna say the things that he knows other people are thinking. I think you need that in the culture. With your, because he talks about spirit a lot. With you being someone that's heavy in faith, when you see Charleston, do you, what do you, do you see a clean I, spirit? Do you feel? I met, I met Charleston once in person, okay. backstage at an 85 South show okay. in Dallas, Texas. So we got introduced either by DC Young Fly or by uh, Carlos Miller. And that's my dudes. Uh, yeah, them my guys. Yeah. Man. Shout out to them, dude. Big shout out. Yeah, like for my real, family, for them yeah. boys. Yeah. Chad, yeah. All, all of them. Chad is my round, yeah. round. Yeah. yeah. So you can't say round. You ain't from New Orleans. Man, so please. I'm that. plugged down you there. <laughs> Met Charleston backstage, got introduced, dapped each other up. And I basically told him, I, I literally did tell him when we took a picture. I said, brother, we say a lot of the same things. I just deliver mine a little different than what you do but a lot of what you say i really am glad that you're saying it because it's making people pay attention now since then his celebrity has grown his star power has gotten bigger and he's gone on to say other things that he probably hadn't said at the time i met him that i'm like Come on, man. Yeah. Like, all right, bro. Like, like you feel <laughs> yeah. me? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. He, like, pushing the, he pushing the envelope. Yeah, bro. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, man, once it starts getting into, like, now you're having a fight with, with fans who paid to come to your comedy yeah. show. You, getting slippery. You're Mason Soldier Boy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and, and then the response is to laugh about the stuff and to poke yeah. fun of you. Now you turn it into a mascot. Mm. Or like I call him a character. And your persona has you being a prisoner of it. You're a prisoner to your persona that you've built. You know? And that's dangerous. So I would caution Charleston to tap back in to who he was when he was just a local um, community activist in Fort Worth, Texas because his heart and his intentions then, that'll really help him with the stature and celebrity that he has now. Because now it's almost seeming like we can't take your message as serious because so many antics that, that surround it. Are you jealous of Charleston White? And I, 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 mean that, I mean that that he could say some of the things that he says and still get that cosign of like, he's for the children and he's for the, not at all, brother. Yeah. Not at all. Um, that was a. I, I appreciate you for asking that question, but I can't name a human being that I'm jealous of, man. Uh, I'm authentically me, and I know that I'm walking in a lane that I'm perfectly fit for. So I'm not experiencing this traffic jam that other people experience in life because they're trying to walk in somebody else's lane. I was just about to ask you if another D1 came up and he was critical of you a little bit. Say another D1 comes. And well, there can't be another D1 because you're the only D1, but another guy who represents the kind of same thing, same kind of message, but he's a little critical of you and saying, hey, I'm in gospel doing it. Why are you even over there in the rap thing? Like, we should be over here doing it. We should build our, for uh, our forest over here and bring people here. Get out of there. And he's critical of you. How would you take someone like that? Do you think you'll be receptive of him? I would have to have an open ear to understand where are they coming from, what angle are they coming from, and is there some truth to it? Because I may need to grow in a certain area and self-reflect and say, dang, I'm glad that this got pointed out because I had a blind spot. We all got blind spots. No, for sure. You feel me? For sure. We for all sure. got blind spots. So uh, it doesn't even have to be another public figure. If a fan in the comment section says something, yeah. I look at it and I ain't gonna lie. I look at it and I ask myself, am I really that? Right. Or do they just totally have me twisted? Right. You know, and I could ignore it. I could ignore it if I'm like, that's just a hater. That's just a clown. That's a troll. That's a person who is legit 
speaking from a real place in and their you heart. can tell because they'll put a long the people that put the long joint and not the just messy shit like the long joint of man back in 2016 when i first started following you man it was at a, and then 2019 when you finally did the such and such i was right there and i said man i'm rooting for d1 but man lately it's been it's like oh he been on the ride with me he yeah. a little different he tapped in is he is he in on this like yeah. does he know yeah. Or am I tripping? Like you, you, you do have to. You have to weigh that up. Here's my personal goal: as my platform grows, I want my message to get bolder, mm. not more bland. You could get bolder, or you could get bland. Yes. You hear me? Yes. I want the platform to continue to grow if God says the same, but I want to get bolder, not blander. Right. Not more lukewarm. Right. I want, I want to have more of that light shining, more of that salt to where you could taste my flavor. You like, mm. oh yeah, he one of them ones because with a massive platform, he's still not afraid to say what may be polarizing or unpopular. Now it's a fine line to walk to make sure that you don't just become a person that's trying to reel off some spicy takes for some clicks. Right. Fine line to walk. And that's a mean one. That's a mean line to walk. That's yeah. a mean one to walk. And thankfully, I was popular before I ever picked the microphone up. I was the homecoming king. I was the captain of the basketball team. I never had no issues with women. You know, uh, back then they didn't want me. Now I'm hot there all over. That ain't my story. <laughs> yeah. That ain't my story. You feel me? Yeah. So yeah. usually, usually yeah. the trauma from that stuff has brothers and Hard sisters on. having a chip yes. on their shoulder. Yes. And because you got that chip on your shoulder, now you up. Oh, y'all finna feel this, you know? I remember Juvenile song on G-Core app, acting like a nigga that ain't never Ooh. had sh Looking through my Benz 10, that's a you know what I'm saying? Ooh, that was hard. Yeah, and, and I'm listening to that. I remember listening to that and being like, dang, this is what it's like when you got a chip on your shoulder that now that you up, they gonna feel that chip. I have a song on my new album, From the Hood to Harvard, that's called Manage Your Chip. Mm. because. If you manage that chip on your shoulder properly, that chip can be your calling card to why you one of them ones and everybody else, everybody else just going through the motions. Trampoline. You heard? Everybody else just going through the motions. But it's that chip that's fueling you. You feel me? But if you don't manage that chip on your shoulder properly, it'll have you bitter. It'll have you resentful. It'll have you upset. It'll have you extra cocky. It'll have you not personable. You feel me? And that manager, I'm giving game on my yeah, album, bro. Man. I went from the hood to Harvard. That's not just an album title, bro. From the hoods of New Orleans to Harvard University, teaching classes up there and doing a fellowship. And when I got there, everything I went through, I made a song about it, imposter syndrome. I felt, when I first got there, Man, what is Lil David in off? Harvard? Yeah. Okay. Man, what is Lil David off Dwyer Road in New Orleans yeah. East? doing at Harvard. I don't think I'm smart enough to keep up with these people. Maybe like I felt a little out of place for like the first few days. Yeah. Imposter syndrome, managing your chip. I see so many black people that's up there at Harvard that they are there, but they are mad because they're like, man, slaves built this school, man. I can't believe mm -hmm. this. Harvard got a legacy of slavery. I'm like, let me tell you what I do. Man, I own real estate on Harvard's campus now. Ooh, I do. That's dope. I own a piece of real estate on Harvard's campus that's now. Dope. So yeah, slaves built this school, but I own real estate on campus. Wow. Tell me my forefathers and ancestors wouldn't be proud of that. Man, please. You heard me? Yeah. So I made songs about all these emotions on the album, bro. Um, I got a song called, uh, um, what's that? Oh, this came from rapping. Brother, I had my keys to my office at Harvard. And when I first walked downstairs the first day after I moved into the office space that I got, I'm looking around on campus and I'm like, bruh, all of this came from me rapping. Like from, from me rapping, this came from that. So I look at real estate, I look at my portfolio, my investments, I look at being at Harvard, being at Tufts University, and I'm like, Man, this came from rapping. The right. same dude that was at LSU. Right. You heard me? Who was trying to walk on the basketball team, got cut, football player, slept with my old lady, took my girl from me, embarrassed me. I'm, I'm made, made a fool out of me in front of the whole campus, yeah. all this stuff. The same dude who best friend got murdered, who had, and, and, and them dudes had the gun to my head. Man, but who just wanted to rap? The same dude that was. Fredo Bang, middle school teacher, Joe Scott, uh, G Money, TC, all these brothers, and who stopped doing that so that I could get into this industry. I'm like, man, all this came from rapping. So I made a song about that. And, right. and like my music, that stuff hit different, bro. Reflections. From a, yeah, yeah, from a real place. Yeah. Like I say, 
I don't care if you know me. You about to respect how I step. Why would you think I'd ever fear you? I don't even fear death. A scary boy need a gun like bad breath need a gum. Yeah, your teeth clean, but I know the power of the tongue. I'm a man of God. I ain't superstitious. From New Orleans where Birdman quotes get treated like Bible scriptures. But me, I ain't the type to brag about what I done bought. I make silent moves, but I get loud results. If D1 talk about his pain, you gon' really relate. D1 talk about his paper, you gon' know that he's straight. You gon' ask about D1, they gon' tell you he great. D1 rap on top of your beat, you gon' know that he ate. <laughs> you bragging about what you done been through, partner? We survivors too. And you call them boys your brothers, but which one's gon' ride for you? Ain't no G-code no more. Boy, the streets done lied to you. That's why I be in my bag, but I be in my Bible too. They don't like me, but they know they can't deny me. Man, I'm a real gangster, and you know right where to find me. G-A-N-G-S-T-A, -S do not try me. Growing and nurturing gifts, serving the Almighty. Keep up. A lot of people how, feel how I be feeling, but don't speak up. I be out at Harvard in my office with my feet up. God, why are you so good to me? I need answers. Slaves built this school, now I own real estate on campus. Hard. It's hard, man. Thank you, brother. That mean a lot coming from yeah. you. Because... I know who watching this. Yeah. And I know that when you say that, yeah. they like, Loon said it's hard. Right. It must be hard. Cause they'll know it's hard, but sometimes they'll be like, I don't know though, cause it's different. Yes. It's di yes. It, it, it ain't money bag your hard. Right. You feel me? Yeah. It ain't this one. It, it ain't young boy hard. It yeah. ain't dirt hard. Yeah. It ain't yeah. little baby hard. Right, right. But, but it's one of them it's ones. Hard. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. And I, what I was going to ask you was, um, was let's it? talk about this. What do you think about? the podcast market, like just media, hip hop yeah. media. Yeah, I think that the podcast market is beautiful right now because, <laughs> man, you can get on your phone, on your computer, and just start talking into the camera nowadays and amass a following without any production value. We in a beautiful facility right now. My brother got lights, y'all. I don't know if y'all know that or not. <laughs> we got four cameras. Yeah. We got three computers that I see over there. You heard me, we got, we got all this, like, but there's people who don't have that to start out, right. but they can still start building the audience yes. because of their authenticity. Yes. So the podcast space is beautiful and I plan on starting the podcast immediately and I just came up with the title. I'ma call it Flipping Tables with D1. Nice. Cause Jesus got mad when he walked into the temple and he saw, man, y'all gambling, y'all sitting here talking crazy in my father's temple in the church. And Jesus went to flipping tables. Jesus, the man that's all about yeah. peace and love and harmony, flipping real tables in the temple. So anybody who knows, it's like, if you know, you know, like when you talk about flipping tables, it's like saying, look, don't push me, but I come in peace. Yes. But don't push me. Right. Key word, don't push yeah, me, cause, cause I'm not afraid to talk that talk. On, man. And I feel like that's what I'm striving to be, bro. Yeah, yeah, you know? and you're gonna have to, and you're gonna have to defend some of that stuff too, right? But you've been doing a great job at it. You don't shy, you don't shy away from those conversations and whatever platform you go to. You like, yo, whatever y'all bring, I'm, I'm defending like, this is how I truly feel. And I think that's refreshing even for the people you speak about when they hear you actually defend what you're saying and no this is my thinking behind that bro like not just me shooting at you dudes like no I, this is my thinking like because some people won't dig like the only introduction is like oh they said that about me don't never bring them dudes around never. me. you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying and unfortunately this game moves so fast somebody mm -hmm. like rick ross mm -hmm. with a private jet and all that. it's like what is really getting to his phone that he's really knowing about like mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he know you. Mm -hmm. He know your face. Mm -hmm. He know you do something in the game, but does he really know how witty and savvy and right? Mm -hmm. It's just it, it takes an introduction for that. And I think that the more you do these kind of things, which you do, I think they'll, especially with the right people, they'll be able to tune in and say, okay, I, I kind of see what Yep. Kind of see where he where he went with that one. That's you know? real. That's and real. and that's what I that's what I take from it. I don't know if um would you ever do drink champs? Absolutely. Man, DJ EFN didn't already talk to me about like, yo, man, we'd love to figure out, we gotta figure out. You don't drink do. though, do drugs. No, I don't drink. I've never drank in my life. Smoke. Never smoked in my life. Yeah. Um now see that right there. That's gonna make some people be like, ah, oh, see. Yeah. He, he see he 
he ain't real or he can't relate to me. Like, see, right. he's just different. So yeah. that's why I don't really all the way. Stop, man. Stop, bro. <laughs> I'm still a human being, bro. <laughs> My heart's still beating just right. like yours. Yes. I hear it. I feel it right now. Come on, man. Come on, man. Don't do me that, culture. Don't, 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 don't try to do me that. And I'm saying this because I know that these be the barriers. Yes. It ain't that I ain't lost loved ones just like you. It ain't that I ain't lose my, my, my baby, my grandma, which, you know, it really messed me up. It ain't that I grew up without a lot in the hood, in the trenches. You feel me? It ain't, it ain't none of that. It'll be they looking for a technicality. Oh, he ain't never drank or smoked. He, yeah. Come on, man. But, you, but it had it all around me, though. Right. It definitely had Do it all Do you think black me. people are a monolith? Absolutely not. And we need to stop viewing ourselves as such. If a black person don't like rap music, don't judge them. I'm about to sit here and name you. I'm, I'm just putting it all out, brother. Yeah. This, is a, this is a comfortable space. Yeah, yeah. So we ain't grow up watching many movies in my house, right? If we talking music, oh, I didn't hear it at all. But movies, I just didn't watch a lot of movies growing up. And then that behavior carried on into adulthood. I just don't be watching a bunch of movies. Right. If it's a dope documentary, sign me up. Gotcha. Right? Movies, biographies, I, I love that stuff. Movies, bro, a lot of the movies that's like staples in black culture, I haven't seen them. Not because I can't relate to it or don't want to. I ain't seen Boys in the Hood. I ain't seen Menace to Society. I ain't seen, name another one. I have seen Juice. Boys um, in the Hood, Menace to Society. You seen Fridays, all the Fridays? I only seen the first one. You ain't seen all the Fridays? I only seen the first one, brother. <sighs> yeah. What's some more? Some black movies. Uh, there's, there's like Friday, Juice, he seen that. Boys seen in the Juice. Hood. Po poetic Justice. That was a, that's a love thing, though, yeah, I, I ain't think. See, I ain't you ain't see poetic, poetic Justice? I ain't see Poetic Justice. I ain't that's see our era, from. man. What else gangster movies come from an era? Like Boys in the... Because that was the year of the gangster. It was a lot of... Huh? South Central. Did you see South Central? Don't be a menace in South Central. No, the regular. Was wasn't it a regular one, South Central? A movie called South... No, they, I don't think they had a movie called South Yeah, Central. it was, wasn't it? The little buddy got killed. Yeah, it was. Sure? Yeah, oh, let me Google that. Central the movie. Yeah. Yeah. South Central. I know I ain't true. Oh, all right. No, that I ain't see that. I ain't see that. That was brother. one of them ones, too. I ain't Damn. See that. Um, so, and I say that to say, and we could probably name 20 yeah. more I ain't seen, but it's that type of stuff that'll make some people be like, oh, yeah, he not real or he not all the way black or uh his black car revoked man we just gotta stop with all that bro oh we, we gotta stop with all that and i understand. i wouldn't say your black card is revert revoked but i will say that there is there's space in between understandings if like just be i had this problem with people in the media just being black don't make you understand culture you know what i'm saying like because you could be black and be from Jamaica and don't know nothing about American culture. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like the black thing confuses us sometimes, but if you never seen none of those movies. But I saw them in real life every day. And there was yeah. no actors. Right. Wasn't no actors in the right. movies. Yeah. Nobody won Academy Awards right. in the night world. Because people will try to use that and say, well, man, he can't relate to me. He don't even, he don't know nothing about yeah. You know, but you saying, nah, this is real life. I didn't I yeah, didn't watch the like movies. I, yeah, yeah, I lived this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like shout out to all my acting friends. Shout out to my brother Jason Mitchell, my man Atheon Crockett, uh, so many dope actors. I even starred in the movie. Um it's what? called it's called Mall Dogs. Yeah, I started it's on Prime and all that stuff. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, so um, You audition or off only for that? No, man. I I, I paid for the movie. It's a, it's an independent oh, okay. movie. Okay. Yeah, we okay. put together me, my brother Murs, real dope rapper out of LA, and my brother Tabby Bonet, real dope rapper and businessman out of uh Washington DC. We came together and we um we put our bread together. We was like, we want to we grew up looking at Ice Cube and Master P and watching them make movies, baller blocking. I seen baller blocking. You heard me? I seen New Orleans, that. Yeah, yeah, I seen yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh we was like, man, we want us to have a movie, be like hip hop artists who can control our narrative and, and, and make a movie. So we put our bread together and made this film. Uh, and I was, yeah, I was one of, I mean, if you look at the cover, like I'm, I'm like right in That's the dope, middle. Bro. I'm like one of the- Especially to fund it yourself. Parents. You really was out here trying to get in this shit though. Bro. Oh, absolutely. And I respect that. Cause you see me, that's what I've done. So yeah. I got a high level of respect for that, bro. Cause people won't, especially, 
for you. But what I do find interesting is that you don't have no competition in your lane. And that could be rare. Mm. And it cannot last for long, mm. right? Because at some point, that's why I asked you that question of like if someone came in that lane. Because I see at some point, the more effective you become, someone comes in that lane. And maybe they're not even as pure as you. That's not a threat. That's a teammate. It looks like a teammate to their critical of you. Now it now it says this the same way you've been and, and they and they can use what you've been doing against you and say, well, I'm critical of you the same way you have been of this entire game, right? So now I'm coming in more Christian than you. Mm -hmm. I don't mess with rap. I'm doing gospel rap. But mm -hmm. I'm now I'm you know what I'm saying? It can mm -hmm. get it can get weird right. in that in that space that you're in. Hopefully they come in as a right. teammate. So yeah, man, it really shows me the 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 gap that exists, Loon, as you're talking, because you're talking from a very genuine place, and I, I, I love it and respect it. And I'm like, dang, Loon has no idea that there is a whole industry of, whether you want to call it Christian rappers right. or just uh, faith-based rappers right. who are unapologetic about their love for God, but who are, like, really out here killing it and making real moves and making real impact and making real money yeah i would love to be put on to some of them because yeah. i don't know i don't have no idea and I, I, I and i think i'm more so not that the genre doesn't exist but i, I think i'm more so speaking to taking your approach not not oh, being okay, in your okay, genre okay, okay. Well, yeah well, so so that part now the taking the approach part um you do have people who may have the same heart or the same message but they say my approach to how I'm doing God's work is different than how you doing it. Right. Dude. You feel me? Um, bro, when, when my first album is called David and Goliath, which is a story out the Bible, but when I got Kevin Gates on the album and I got my man Dizzy from New Orleans on the album and I just think about what I was doing at that time, promoting that thing in the streets of Baton Rouge and New Orleans, I've always been this person that's existed at the fork in the road between. Yes. A church wants to book me to come perform on Sunday and they want to hear my song One Man On Me and my song Queens talking about women and uh, this other song The Garden of Eden that I got. Meanwhile, I Hate Money is on this same album and it's featuring Kevin Gates and I'm in these same clubs that's, uh, that's doing open mic night and everything and I'm performing songs here as well. I always been that person that was kind of like living in both of those spaces authentically. Mm -hmm. So that ain't everybody's calling. And right. some people, some people want it to be their calling because they feel like, man, this where the cool kids are. Yes. You feel from, me? from the Christian thing, from the righteous, the, you, you are like the rapper of the Christian people. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. you're the one that, that it's okay to wear a chain. Mm -hmm. It's okay to stand next to gates to, mm -hmm call out me can speak with Jim. Mm. Those guys, this is a very unique thing. It does never bleed over. Mm -hmm. There's no, like you said, there's no bridging of those gaps. Right. It does never bleed over. If you do Christian rap, they don't book you at clubs. If, if you do this rap, they don't book you at churches. There you go. And, and you've been able to kind of dance. There you go. And I'm not, I'm not that crafty to where this is all calculated. Right. That's what I want people to know. Yeah. That's the power of the God I serve is, I could have never sat back and be like, so the strategy is gonna be, make this type of song with this artist, but then this type of song, and then you're gonna have these people want you and these people want you, and da da da. Man, I couldn't, have, I couldn't have scripted this path, so that's how I know it's authentic, and that's why I don't overthink it, but I also don't doubt what God can do, in terms of like, man, I don't know what's next for me. You couldn't have told me two years ago I would be a college professor, and be able to design my own course, but at the same time, putting music out and being a keynote speaker at conferences and all that, man, I'm just going with the flow, bro, because yeah. I don't know how long I have here. And because I don't know how long I have here, that's my chip, is I know I got a purpose, I know what my tool is. So the book is called David Found His Slingshot. You familiar with the story yes. of David and Goliath? Yes. David defeated Goliath. With a slingshot. With a slingshot. Goliath was this massive nine foot tall giant who everybody was afraid of, right? Everybody was intimidated by, by Goliath. David, young dude, you heard me, young teenager, was running an errand for his daddy and was like, man, what y'all afraid of battling this dude for? Like, for what? It was like, man, Goliath gonna kill whoever stepped down there to him. Straight up, he gonna kill him. Like, we all intimidated. David was like, I'll go and fight Goliath, 
Why? Because I know God got my back, number one. But number two, I don't need your sword, uh, Loon. I don't need your shield, mm. right? I don't need none of y'all weapons. I know my own special gift, which is this slingshot. Mm. I'm a beast with this slingshot. Now they thinking he crazy. They always think you crazy. Yes. Then they want to be like you. Then they copy you. So they thought he was crazy at first until he took that slingshot out, went down there to battle Goliath, and with one rock was able to toss that mug and pow, sting Goliath in the forehead. Goliath falls. David takes Goliath's sword and slit his head off with his own sword. You heard me? Yeah. When that happens, bro, everybody is amazed David becomes the king, right? Eventually David becomes the king. This book is all about us all finding our slingshot. That's dope. My slingshot is hip hop and education. Right. I know that's my two slingshots. Them gifts, people might not understand them. They might not understand like why I'm so good at what I do or why I'm able to do what I do in a way that other people can't. That's because it's my slingshot and it's not yes. yours. They might not understand how with no cosign, you done built this. Yes. And how he on Breakfast Club, how he yes. on this all of a sudden, da da yes. da. That's because this your slingshot. Right. And it's probably just one of them. I'm sure yes, you got other ones. Yeah, for sure. And the key is to finding your slingshot in life. Because when you find your slingshot and you use it for the purpose God designed it for, you can defeat the Goliaths in your life. Facts. And I, I, I want to also tell the youngsters following us that, like, um, just know that whatever happens, right? You go through things, life feels like it, it tears you down, but God and the universe creates balance. It, it, it will be balanced, right? It, for, the, for, the, for every night that it rains, there will be sunshine. Mm. You have to just weather the storm and mm. don't give up because a lot of us will give up and mm. go back to what was working, mm. you know? And so I want the people to follow us. And also, I want you to be able to breathe life into the young man that's following you um, because there's young men following your path, right? There's, there's some rap guy now that's a 14 year old, it's like, yeah, D1, I don't smoke either, bro. But I like young boy, I like baby, you know what I'm saying? I, 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 but I, my mom won't let me uh, listen to that stuff all day, or she don't let me watch the documentary on YouTube. Like, she's on me, but I like rap, bro, like, you know? And so, you have to remain powerful mm. for him. Same with me. I got to remain powerful because I tell the youngsters that if anybody out there is in content world and they're looking for a business model, I have to be the business model. Mm. The reason I say that is because I didn't drag an audience from anywhere. Mm. So there's more people in America and the world like me than there is rappers that's coming from somewhere to start a podcast. Right? So I'm, I'm, I'm the person that says you can come off the street Quit your job or whatever it is you've done and build this thing. Mm. You can't follow Joe Budden mm. because he was rapping 20 years before he done it. You can't follow Cameron because you know what I'm saying? Mm. So that's, that's the thought process. Like, you got to be strong for the ones behind you. That's real, bro. And that's a great reminder. Like, thank you because it's not always easy. I know I'm up here smiling and I'm, and I'm, I'm shining. I got the new album out. I got, and I want to tell y'all, y'all get the book from Mission Vision Lifestyle. We'll put links. What, we also thank put you, links brother. everywhere. Thank yeah. You. Um, I know I'm up here and it's like, dang, that boy D on his victory lap right now. Man, there's nights where I'm crying. There's nights where I'm confused. I have a, a real rare physical condition to where I'm often dealing with like real intense chest pain and Damn. it's called achalasia. Yeah, if anybody Google that, you're gonna see how intense What does that it is. mean? What does that do? Yeah, achalasia is something I've been having since high school to where, um, my esophagus, which is where you're taking your food and you're taking your liquids, uh, you're supposed to be able to digest that stuff into your stomach. My esophagus, uh, the cells have corroded and are like real, like dead near the end of it. So instead of the food going straight down, oftentimes it, it gets stuck, you know? And when it gets stuck, like right here, um, it's either this real, real, real intense chest pain or if it gets stuck, it comes back up. So. Literally, it could be food, it could be stuff that I'm drinking. I stay away from certain foods. That's but ever I'm since on. high school, when I was playing basketball and hooping, man, I'm throwing up like half the time when I'm eating. So I had a massive surgery my senior year after basketball season. I got like five slits going across my, my stomach where they cut me open and they tied a part of my stomach around my esophagus at an angle to where it's like manually like holding it open. 
you know what I mean? Yeah. To, to give it some space. Right. So they were telling me, they were like, there's no cure for this, but. Treatment. Yeah, this is the best treatment. Stay away from these type of foods. Oh, they say alcohol was one of the things. Um, if you don't drink alcohol, yo, stay away. So I had never started drinking. So at that point, it was like, I'm definitely it's not finna yeah, drink. Yeah, yeah. It's over with, yeah. right? Um, even cold drinks. When you say you was gonna get a Sprite, right. I, I'm not supposed to have carbonated drinks. You know, That's why you, okay, and all okay. That. Give me a Gatorade. Right. Day, you know what I mean? Um, so like, I deal with that stuff, bro, randomly. Like, I, I'm saying all this just because I don't want people to think that it's easy, but just because it's not easy don't mean it's not essential. It's essential that you keep going when you know that you are being used as a vessel to inspire others. Yes. It's essential when you see that God is really ordering your steps in a way that gatekeepers can't open, in a way that nobody can open or close these doors for you that's man-made, you feel me? You got to keep going because it's like, man, my life is going to be temporary. I won't always be here, but that energy I put out into this world, and for me, since I'm a rapper, that music I put onto these beats and onto these platforms, that's going to live forever. So I got to be careful and intentional about what I'm putting out there. So people not going to remember what you said, but they're going to remember how you made them feel. Thanks. You better believe that. I don't remember nothing my fourth grade teacher taught me, but I remember how she made me feel when she told me I wasn't smart enough to be the president of the United States because that's what I used to want to be. Okay. I used to want to be the president till I said it in front of the class and she loud cabbed me and clowned me in front of everybody. That's fucked up. And I remember how she made me feel, and that's why to this day I tell that story oftentimes when I'm speaking to youth across this country. So it's just, man, be careful how you're making people feel. You got business transactions. It don't have to feel slimy if business is being done, right. you know what I mean? That don't mean business shouldn't be done, but it don't have to feel slimy. Yeah. You can have disagreements with people, it don't have to be like, oh, you are op forever just because yeah. we had one disagreement. Yeah. And, and, and that's all I want people to know. Yeah, what about gatekeepers did you find out in this industry? I found out that, <laughs> I found out that gatekeepers are real. They, they, they real when you're not walking in the lane that was uniquely designed for you. If I'm trying to be in somebody else's lane, that wasn't meant for me in the first place. So you know what I'm gonna get met with? With a bunch of resistance from gatekeepers to where they're saying, well, since he think that this is something that's meant for him, I'm gonna position myself to where he gotta come through me to get it. And they might want your money, they might want sexual favors, they might want just your integrity, they might want you to water down your message. Gatekeepers are very real. And it hasn't been until I was like, God, Man, I don't care about going platinum no more. I don't care about having to drive a certain type of car no more. I don't care, man. Do you truly not care, though? I truly yeah, don't I, care. Listen, it's hard for me to believe this, and I'm going to push back on it because I want you to clarify. Because, you know, I, just me, as we've been speaking, you've worked hard for this thing. Like, you wanted this, bro. At the beginning, you knew I won't end this game that has inspired me, right? So... Do you truly not care about going platinum? Or are you saying that just to just cope with the reality that I may not go platinum with this message? Man, I respect that we finally crossing paths because I ain't met many like you and you probably up until this point ain't met many like yes. me. My first ever project that I put out is on streaming platforms. Like we got, we got receipts. This sucker came out, I was still a college student. And I knew, okay, this is my first project I'm monetizing. It's called right. I Am Who I Am. On the very first song, bro, on the very first song, I say, if I ain't supposed to rap God, please let me know. But if I'm supposed to rap God, please let me blow. If I don't sell a lot of records, I ain't stressing. If I don't sell here, I'm going platinum in heaven. Can you play that? Yeah. I want the, the people to hear that. What's the name of the first song? Platinum in heaven. Platinum that boy in heaven. ain't told no lie. Y'all, this is 16 years ago. That boy ain't me? told no this lie. This 16 years ago. This is my first ever project. That boy ain't told no lie. Literally the first, literally the first song, the first four balls. Come on, man. That's deep, man. That that cause because because I don't know how you live in this place where 
I know you want to be influential. I know you want to be like, you don't cuss, you don't drink, you don't do none of that. But I know you want to be at the top of the mountain and say, this work, y'all. Mm. Just like that work, this work. Mm. And it's like, when I hear you say, because the tongue is powerful. So when I hear you say, I don't even want to go platinum no more. I wonder how, how the universe receives that. Mm. Or does that block anything? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm trying to, because yeah. I know the, the reason, I don't, I don't know, but, but what I know about the, the universe and willpower is that starting with, with what you explained to me, the level of willpower to want to get this thing off the ground, you can literally make that happen. Mm -hmm. But now to actually get here and have an opportunity to go platinum, because if we're being fair, you're in the industry, you have the connections, like you have a legit opportunity and chance with the right business surrounding it to go platinum. Mm -hmm. So to hear you say, I don't even want to go platinum no more. Yeah. I wonder about like. Yeah, did that block anything? Nah, it actually did the opposite, brother. It actually freed me from the slavery of defining success by a man-made metric. What is going platinum? In the eyes of God. You think but, God give a pluck about right. if you platinum or not? That's something to where the industry has said, we're going to decide that a million units sold equals going platinum. We're going to make these big fancy plaques. We're going to make sure that when artists sell this amount, that we get them pictures holding their plaques. And that's going to make everybody who looks up to these artists be like, that right there is the definition of you made it or you did it big. I simply freed myself from that. And I, I'm not gonna be opposed to going platinum, but I'm like, that should never be the metric of success in the first place. Cause when you got a gun to your temple and you're thinking your life about to end, what can platinum status get you in that moment? Right. But see, I think platinum status outside of the industry because you have a gripe with the industry. So you, you gotta be careful with that because I think it speaks just to influence, mm, right? A okay. million units sold with that message. Mm. Like I, I think the right words is I deserve to go platinum, mm. right? But if, you know, I don't know what the right words are, but, but it's like, I wonder what the power of the tongue. I know you say you, you look at it like you freeing yourself, but I don't know, man. I, I, don't, I don't like to speak ill against or speak Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, I, I, see, I see what you're saying. I yeah, see what you're saying. because it's like, yo, universe, God, I deserve to go platinum for this kind of work I'm doing. Like this deserve platinum when I'm even if it ain't platinum, but when I'm talking, this deserve platinum. It's like, oh, yeah. you know what I'm saying. But maybe that's not what's needed, because God is just looking at it like you don't even deserve life. Mm. You ain't do nothing to deserve being born. You could have been a chair. You could have been a garbage can. I chose to make you into a human being. Who are you to start telling me what you deserve just because I worked hard. I used to go to all the open mics, God. I'm D1. I was a teacher. And then I used to be rapping around town. That I deserve this. Man, once again, do you have a spiritual worldview or do you have a worldly worldview? And that worldly worldview will have you... It's like being on the football field. You on the field, so all you see is what's around you from that perspective. That spiritual worldview is like you in the skybox where the coordinators be sitting. So you can look down at the field and you can see patterns and you can see plays that the players might not even see because you're looking at it from a different angle. Equivalent to that skybox view is what it's like to think like, dang, what does our creator look down at us and say, this is what I want from my creation. Since when do the creation get to dictate what they want, Loon? Come on, man, AI, a robot. Man, a robot ain't supposed to get out here and dictate, now that you created me, I get to do what I want. Get out my face. You are not anything. I am my own man. Man, I made you, man, you can't dictate that. But that's what happened is this free will that we've been blessed with has us feeling ourselves so much to where we so concerned with who we are that we forgetting whose we are. Whose are we? Man, we, we belong to God, man. So going platinum feels so elementary when it's like, well, this is what I want or this is what I feel like I deserve. When you humble yourself to that point, I'm still a dog. I'm still a beast. I'm still that dude at what I do, at using my slingshot. But I'm also humble enough to where I know that 
none of this is entitled to me. I don't have an entitlement, you know? You know how we just be like, man, you gonna respect me no matter what. You gonna respect me. Man, we are not entitled to anybody having to respect us, bro. Like, we're not. So, ideally, someone would respect us. Why you don't think that? Because, bro, if we don't know a person, then we would hope that the way they're cut and the way that they cloth is textured, that they would say, I'm just going to show respect to people off GP. But that person might be like, you got to earn my respect. I don't know you. You got to earn my respect. I can't get mad at you if that's how you feel. That's how the rap game is. They don't just say, since you said you want to be a rapper, we're going to respect you and feel like you dope. Man, I got to win over every crowd. Why you think I'm on your show rapping? I don't want him to just say, right. well, he, he, he could definitely talk. Him and Lou had a heck of a conversation. Man, I got to let these people know I really rap, man. Yeah. So we apply this stuff selectively, man. Selectively when we know, dang, I don't deserve nothing. Nobody owe me nothing. I got to go get all, this cam- all these cameras, all this equipment. I got to grind it out. But I would say after I get all these cameras and equipment, and if I take my time and understand what I'm doing, I would say, yo, man, like, there's a point where I say, yo, I deserve a shot. Like... You know what I mean? Like I deserve Yeah. I deserve a shot. Like I've put the work in. I've like it's like going to the gym every day, working out, and then say, God, I don't deserve no muscles. <laughs> Even though I'm in here every day. God, I don't deserve no mu I'm in here working yeah, now. Yeah. It's okay, like it's okay. like, yo, man, like I wanna <laughs> I won't let me see a little something yeah, for yeah. Well the, why but but how do you apply that when you in an industry that's based on People rocking with you. You can't just pull up to the people and be like, "Come on, man! I bought four cameras, y'all. Yeah, come nah, on, man! I nah, got nah. three. I got three computers. No, man. you put your work out. That's why I say you don't ask them for it, but you speaking to God in the universe when you saying subconsciously you're speaking when you say, "Man, I don't even want to go platinum no more." Right? That's what mm-hmm. I'm saying. Like the power of the tongue in that moment is saying, "Oh, well, I did say, I did say." If I don't sell a lot of records, I ain't stressing. No, that's in your rhymes. What made me say that to you is that you literally, in the middle of us talking, was like, man, I used to do this, man. I, I used to want to uh, sell a million records. Man, I don't even want to go platinum no more. Gotcha. And that's what made me say, oh, man, you sure you want to? Say less. Say less. If I said that, then, yeah, there's no reason for me to say I don't want to go platinum right. no more. I'm not opposed to going platinum. It's just not a. It's just not hung over your head. There like, you go. It's, yeah. not, it's not. It's not hanging over my. Honestly, bro, on some bucket list stuff. This was my bucket list getting into the game. Don't judge me, cause my bucket list is my own. Yeah. You know, it, it might yeah. be quirky or whatever. <laughs> I, I wanted to meet DMX, who I grew up listening to all of his music. Really looked up to DMX. I wanted to meet DMX. Check. Met DMX multiple times. Prayed with DMX backstage at one of his concerts. Uh, amazing. Dope. Wanted to meet Nas. They met Nas about 15 times at this point. He wanted them ones too. Yeah, Nas yeah. congratulated me on From the Hood to Harvard Shout and, 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 and on what I'm doing at Harvard uh, and on my fellowship. Uh, that was on my bucket list. Going on the Breakfast Club on my bucket list. Just doing finna do that. Six more days. Yeah. You heard me? On my bucket list. I wanted to get signed to a major label because growing up, it wasn't this whole independent is dope era. It right. was, man, we trying to get signed. You know what I'm yeah. saying? We trying to be on TV. That's a real rapper. Straight yeah. up. Yep. Yeah. Got signed. That's my bucket list, bro. Yeah. That was, that, that, was, that, was, that was my. So what keeps you going? At this point? Yeah. The impact that I see that I'm making on people's lives. So that's what I'm saying. That platinum plaque speaks to impact as well. You just don't like that the industry has wrapped this celebration around it. There you go. What I'm saying is that platinum plaque speaks to a million units. Got you. You know what I'm saying? A million people hearing that message you yeah. that you've been pouring out yeah. for 15 years. Yeah. So to now get to this point and say, man, like just, cause the industry got me so, I'm so uh, with that, yeah. man, I don't even want to go platinum. Yeah. It's like, bro, 15 years of this. Yeah, that, that's, that's a good point. That's a good point. So I guess the idea of going platinum has been replaced in terms of where it's at on my list. It, 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 it got put in a category of definitely not opposed to that on right. any level, not opposed to going platinum, right. but not feeling like I'm a failure if I don't go 100%, platinum. You feel me? 100%. So with gatekeepers, with your message, if gatekeeping is real, wouldn't they keep you out of, out of the industry 
at all? You've got four or five different deals. How do you remain in the industry of gatekeeping, Israel? Great question. 